Suppose I have a magnetic field into the board. I have a positively charged particle, and it's moving to the right. Which way will there be force on it, if any? Well, I'll use my thumb for the V. My fingers are the field, so they go in, and so the force I get is upward. If I have an electron going to the right, V, B, force on a positive, so the electron feels a force that way. That means that on this diagram, with the magnetic field pointing away, positive charges will swerve to the left. Negative charges will swerve to the right. Let's suppose we have a positive charged particle going straight up. Which way is the force? V, B, force. What if we have an electron going that way? V, B, force on a positive, force on a negative. So the force would be that way. Again, it's going to make it swerve to the right or clockwise. Positive charges are going to feel a force that way and swerve to the left, counterclockwise, and that's when the magnetic field is pointing away. What if I had a wire carrying a current to the right? Which way is the force on that? Well, the current is like moving positive, right? Benjamin Franklin's fault. Uh, if that's positive for charge motion, this is the field, force is upward. So this wire will feel a force all along its length, upward. Now a magnetic field pointing out of the board. If I have a negatively charged particle and it's going straight down, we would have V downward, the B outward, that's a little awkward, so I'll go like this, V downward, B outward, force on a positive would be this way, force on a negative is that way. And this particle will swerve to the left counterclockwise. Makes sense, it's opposite of this one. If I have a positively charged particle, it's moving to the left, V, B, force upward. What if I have a positively charged particle going diagonally that way? V, B, force that way. And it's swerving to the right clockwise. And this one is swerving to the right clockwise. That's point charges feeling Lorentz force in a magnetic field. And I could throw in a wire while we're at it. I suppose this current going downward. That's the flow of positive. Magnetic field is this way. Force would be to the left. Now let's have the magnetic field in the plane of the board so you can see it. It's pointing to the right in the positive x direction. Let's have a positively charged particle. Suppose it isn't moving. Which way is the force? There isn't one. Magnetism is only felt by moving charges. All right, let's give it a velocity. Suppose its velocity was this way. Which way would the force be? There'd still be no force. You don't get a force unless you cut across the field lines. This is going with it. Likewise, if the velocity had been this way, there would also be no force at all. If you move along the field lines, there's no force. You have to cut across them. Well, what about a positively charged particle going at an angle? Now we can finally see the sine theta in the formula force equals QVB sine theta. In all the earlier examples, theta was 90 degrees because the V and the B were perpendicular. The B was into or out of the board, and the V was in the board. But now we can see that the theta here means the velocity has two components a component that does nothing and a component that actually has an effect. So this would be the V, you know, perpendicular part. So with a V like that and a B like that, the force would be into the board. So we would draw the force as an X. What if I had an electron going left? 
Well, that's going along the field line, so there's no force. Okay, let's give it a velocity this way then. V, V, force on a positive, force on a negative. That force is going to be out of the board. So that electron would swerve this way. And this particle would be feeling force into the board, so it would be going back like so, and it would be moving that way. So it would actually be spiraling. And that's what happens when particles from the sun hit the Earth's magnetic field. They spiral, and that shaking around creates light, and that's the northern lights. All right, more examples. Suppose I have a wire carrying current straight up. V, B, the force would be into the board. Suppose I want to know which way the magnetic field is that's being created by a flow of charge. If you have a current in a long straight wire, right hand rule, this time my fingers are curled. My thumb is the straight part, my fingers are the curved part. Uh, so when my thumb points along the current, the magnetic field wraps like this which means the magnetic field is actually going to be out above the wire and in below the wire. It would be down in front and up in back, and that would be counterclockwise as seen from the right. And that's what the magnetic field looks like. Easier to view it if we see it dead on. Suppose the current is coming straight towards us then the magnetic field curls counterclockwise. The magnetic field lines are circles, and the field gets weaker with distance. If you have a current that is directly into the board, then you're going to have, right hand rule, thumb, magnetic field, clockwise. That's the direction of the magnetic field around a wire. Suppose we have a loop of wire carrying a current a battery, resistor, current in the front is going to the right, current in the back is going left. You can use the right hand rule that I did before for this and do each little bit of the wire, but it's faster and easier and less hand strain to simply say, okay, my thumb is straight, my fingers are curved. If the wire is curved, that means my fingers are now the wire. And my thumb is the direction of the magnetic field. This is the direction of the magnetic field in the center of the loop. It would be upward. If you're driving in America, this is like a water fountain in a rotary is one analogy. If you're driving that way and the magnetic field is coming up and out like that. So a loop like that actually has a north end and a south end and the side the magnetic field is coming out is the north side and the side the magnetic field is going in is the south side. When they talk about the area vector for a loop with a current going that way, the area vector points this way. And when they talk about the magnetic dipole moment, the magnetic dipole moment points the same way. So all of these point the same way. The B in the center, the magnetic dipole moment, the area vector, and the north side of the loop. All of those follow this right hand rule. If my fingers are the curved wire, my thumb is the direction. That gives the orientation of the magnetic dipole moment and everything else with that loop. What if I have two wires? Each one is making a magnetic field, and then the other one feels that magnetic field, so there's going to be a force between the wires. Let's figure out which way. So there's multiple things to work out. First, the magnetic field of wire number one, right hand rule, out on this side, in on that side, getting a little bit weaker, getting a little bit weaker as you move away. Now current number two, out on this side, in on that side. So we have, so you can see I color coded them. This wire is making this magnetic field. This wire is making this magnetic field. So to figure out what's happening to say wire two, now we move on to the forces part of the right hand roll. Now we have the current two is a flow of positive charge. The magnetic field that it is in created by current one, that magnetic field at that location is into the board. 
So V, B, force. Current two feels an upward force. What about the other way? What about the effect of current two on wire one? Wire one has a current this way. The magnetic field of number two, of blue dots, are outward, and so the force is downward. And you get the rule that parallel currents attract. Anti-parallel currents repel. Finally, let's suppose that you have a current number one this way, and a current number two, uh, let's say this one's going into the board. So you have two wires. One's carrying current like this, the other one's carrying current like that. What do the magnetic fields look like now? This one is making a counterclockwise field. This one is making a clockwise field. So at a particular point, say here, wire one is making counterclockwise field. Wire two is making clockwise field. So at a point directly between them, they're both making field upward and the field would add. Suppose we had some point here. This one is making magnetic field this way. What about the other wire? This wire is making clockwise at this location, so it's making a magnetic field that way, although it's farther away, so it should be fairly small. So that would be the direction of magnetic field number two. This would be magnetic field number one. And so the total magnetic field would be the vector sum. And so if necessary, you add the x components and the y components. Over here, we would have a big downward magnetic field and a small upward magnetic field from that one. So the net magnetic field would be down. And whether these balance each other depend on the relative sizes of the currents. So it is possible, just like with the charges of different sizes and finding a spot where the force canceled out to zero, where the electric field canceled to zero, you do the same thing with currents and say, is there a spot in between or on the left or on the right where the field cancels out? So that was a lightning round of right-hand rules.